all the higher end speakers I've listened to are mostly designed either in the USA, Canada, or Europe. Have you ever wondered what about the rest of the world? What about a high end speaker from Malaysia, Zimbabwe, Thailand, for example? I bet you there are many excellent expensive speakers from these countries that have not gotten the privilege to listen to until today. Today's speaker is a bit special because it comes from a country that is not known for designing high-end speakers. But before we begin, the sponsor for today's video is Surfshark VPN. Now allow me 71 seconds to talk about Surfshark. For those who have never heard of VPN, it stands for Virtual Private Network. Now in this case, it is a software that helps secure your access to the internet. It will Number one, make your browsing private. Two, hide your IP internet address. And three, stop your internet provider from tracking you. See, usually I use VPN to encrypt my internet activity so no one can track or steal my data. Now, if you're someone who uses public Wi-Fi a lot, yeah, it's a good idea to have this kind of protection. Another reason I use VPN is it allows me to change my location on the internet. Now, as you know, recently I started a company called Galeon, and most of my clients are in the US. One annoying thing is when I go to schedule a pickup on the UPS website, it always redirects me to the Canadian site. So I cannot schedule a pickup for my US clients. With Surfshark, I put my location as USA. When I go to the UPS website, it will default to the USA site and I can schedule a pickup in five minutes. So how does the ability to change countries help you? Well, if you're like me, stuck with Canadian Netflix, you know, the watered down version of Netflix, now just use your imagination what you can do with Surfshark VPN. Now there are many other benefits with uh, Surfshark. For example, it can notify you if your personal data has been leaked. Very interesting. And for some of you, this alone might be worth looking into. Now, if you use my promo code in the description, you can get three months free and you also get to try it for a month free. Okay, was that 71 seconds? Did I nail it? Whatever, let's get back to the speakers. Now, one thing I try to do on my YouTube channel is to talk about gear that are not popular. After all, do we really need a 10th review of uh, whatever DAC version 54? So when Henry from Alexandria Auto reached out to me asking if I could review his speaker, yeah, definitely, because you know it's not every day I get to review a $6,500 speaker from Indonesia. Now, to compete in today's market, for them to ask six grand, that speaker better sound divine or have to be made of gold. Now, as much as I like to help a new young company out, I have to be honest in my assessment, else, man, it will be only a matter of time before audio files with pitchforks start showing at my front door. So these speakers were shipped in two nice wooden crates. And I had to admit, I was really excited. And when I first powered them up, I thought, you know what? They sound good. I spent 30 minutes with them and then I lent it to my audio buddy, Mr. Quad. Now, for those who don't follow me, I give all my audio buddies nickname. Uh, he owns a pair of Quad 2905. So a few days later, Mr. Quad messaged me saying, hey Ben, these sound a bit aggressive. And I was puzzled because I had not experienced that at my place. So I dropped by his place to listen. Okay, okay, this sounded a bit forward. And I noticed that the speaker stands were a bit high. So I lent him my speaker stands and a few days later he told me, hey, you know what, they sound good. And he was especially impressed with the expansive big sound stage. Okay, great news, a promising start. A few days later, I brought them home and I noticed, darn man, they, they can get a bit aggressive. What the hell, man? This is weird because the speaker stands I was using were the same one that I lent to Mr. Quad. So I start pairing it with smoother sounding amplifiers, hoping to tone it down, no, smoothen it out. It was, it helped, but not enough. And later I invited friends over to listen and everyone had a similar experience. An audio buddy of mine described the problem as having a dip in the mid bass so that it gives this upper mid range bum. So with everyone's feedback, sadly I decided not to review these speakers and 
I told them I'll send them back. Now, as I said, I really wanted to help Henry because as someone who has just brought a product to market, the Galeon TS120, I can empathize, but I gotta be honest, right? So in order to make sure that I truly gave these speakers a fair chance, you know, maybe it got damaged during shipping, I took out my measuring mic and I was hoping to figure out the problem because Henry told me, man, they're, they're not supposed to sound like that. Sure, sure, the upper mid range, maybe a very dynamic, but that's intentional and not, but not to the point where it, it makes you want to run for the exit. <laughs> so here's the interesting part. So when I measured the speakers in my room, in my normal sitting position, I saw the mid bass dip. So what I was hearing matches what my audio buddies described. And then I start moving the mic a different location, different distance from the speaker. And I noticed, oh, okay, the measurements change significantly. And this surprised me. And I guess there is a reason why people say, you know, the room accounts for 50% of the sound and make sure you position your speakers well. And as I look at the measurement data from different positions in my room, I thought to myself, hey man, what if I do this? You know, I, I really push the distance between the speaker and where I'm sitting. Guess what? Once the speakers were positioned beyond a certain distance from me, that aggressive problem that I was experiencing, yeah, it was gone. And I was shocked and embarrassed. Well, you know, embarrassed, yeah. I should eat broccoli for a week as punishment. Now, I have to say, once I had it in the right spot, it sounded very engaging. And there was something different about these speakers compared to all the other speakers I've tried. It's like a hybrid of a single driver speaker and a multi-driver speaker. Now it has this magic. And I would say it's for a niche group of people, a bit like Klipsch La Scala, in the sense that those who like it will not only like it, but love it. So my audio buddies, today let us talk about the monitor speaker from Alexandria Audio. What did happen to the last 10? I ran away with my life fast forward Never turn back again It's kind of funny that the more we pass time The more we need to set the rewind And 19 was the year I had to leave you But now I'm seeing all the signs Is this really happening? The monitor speaker is a two-way stand mount speaker That comes with a custom-made 8-inch paper cone woofer And a 1.1 inch tweeter with a short waveguide. Now this is an 8 ohm speaker and has a sensitivity of 90 dB. Although this is a stand mount speaker, it is quite large. So let me show you how big it is next to the Bukhar S400. Despite its large size, it only weighs 14 kg, which I love because these days I hate moving 50 kg speakers. For frequency response, 35 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And I was shown a photo of the crossover and it has like 14 parts, so quite complex. Henry spent a lot of time tuning the speaker to have a very specific sound. So let's talk about what I like about the speaker. The resolution and detail are exceptional. And these days I'm used to listening to $3,000 to $5,000 speakers. And when it comes to resolution, the monitor are better than most of them. You can tell there's more density compared to most speakers. A lot of times that, you know, the super resolving tweeters, it is as if they're yelling at you, trying to catch your attention. The monitor speakers, you forget about the tweeter. Next, the soundstage is airy and wide. And this is one thing Mr. Quad noticed, despite him owning speakers like the Quad 2905 and those electrostatic speaker with God level, you know, wall of sound soundstage. Yet he was still impressed with the big soundstage of these speakers. The positioning of instruments is really defined and the separation is excellent. For me, the bass is the best thing about these speakers. Sure, it is dynamic and punchy, but you know, these days, you have speakers like uh, Klipsch RP7, RF7, you have uh, XTZ M8, which I reviewed recently, that are even more dynamic and punchy. So what I find excellent about the bass of the speaker is that it's snappy and fast. It renders a drum really well, palpable, and you can feel the air vibration and hollowness, for example, around the drum convincingly. Just to say it has nuanced bass does not do it justice. There is finesse in the bass. So if you look at the overall picture, it does everything really well. 
Yet, I say this speaker is not for everyone, but rather for a niche market, and that has to do with how the mid-range is. Mid-range, okay? So over the years, I've owned many single driver speakers at different price. For me, single driver speakers are like durian. For those who don't know what durian is, it's called the king of fruits in Asia. It smells like poo. In fact, some hotel, they ban it. Yet those who love it, love it to death. Single driver speakers are like that. There's something magical, special about the mid-range. You either love it or hate it. You can say it is lifelike and it does give you that intimate feeling with the singer. The dynamic range in the mids also seems to be more extended. So meaning if you have a singer yelling, the top of the note seems to reach a higher volume. Sure, it sounds more energetic, realistic, uh, especially with instruments like flute. But one of the issues with that is that it can get a bit shouty. In fact, some companies deal with their shoutiness by using notch filters. Now, shoutiness might sound like a bad word in the audiophile world, but it is really a question of how controlled and above all, a question of taste. So let me tell you a story. Now, I remember one day, an audio buddy of mine, Russ, he dropped by to listen to my new single driver speaker. He owns speakers like Clip, Shizu Audio, Omega speakers. Well, Omega, if you don't know, they are single driver speakers. And notice all those speakers he owns are quite forward sounding. So what I had at the time was a speaker called Exemplar. It was a speaker I had, I had a love-hate relationship. The way it renders instruments like violin will give you goosebumps. And the problem though, is the shoutiness can at times be a bit too aggressive for me. So when Russ came by, I was expecting him to have the same reaction about these speakers. There was this track Russ played, female vocal. It's one of those songs where the singer would hit a very high pitch note. And I remember saying to myself, darn, that's a bit too much. Then I remember looking at Russ after the song finish, he, had this big smile on his face. He loved it 100%. And I guess you can argue that's how real life music is supposed to sound, right? If it's supposed to be dynamic, then let it be dynamic. If it's supposed to be extended, then let it be extended. Just like in real life. So it is with experiences like this that I always say it really is a question of taste. Some people think their way is the only correct way, but meet enough audiophiles like me, you will learn the world is really diverse. Russ loved the sound of those speakers so much, he bought the speakers off me. So, why did I just spend what feels like an hour telling you this story? Now, these speakers, okay, the monitors mid-range, have that characteristic where the upper mid-range dynamics are really extended. Now, I did say earlier, position the speakers right and it will not be aggressive. However, that extended mid-range dynamic is still there. Way better control than most single driver speakers I've listened to. Earlier this week, I had an audio buddy drop by to listen. So this audio buddy was the first to get to listen to these speakers with the correct positioning. And on top of that, the perfect matching equipment. I used the NAD M33. You know what, the, the Bruno Code Terra M that uses 6L6 tubes was a pretty good match too. And when I ask him the mid-range, is it aggressive or shouty? He said, no, no, not at all. It was actually quite pleasant for him. It was a bit lean, he said. Now, this leanness, or some would call it linear, can be a good thing for some of you. Now, I'm not saying it's a thin sounding speaker. If you listen to 6L6 EL84 tubes, for example, unlike 300B tubes, they tend to sound a bit lean on the lean side. There's a certain magic to it that would draw you in. And I find myself drawn in with the vocals, uh, with, with these monitor. You can ask, why not pair it with a Macintosh amp because Macintosh has a thick mid-range? I would say, look, you're supposed to embrace the strength instead of covering it up. It's like buying a hyper detail focus speaker and getting the smoothest veil sounding amp just to tame it down. Heck, you might as well not buy a focus in the first place. The advantage, if the mid-range is on the linear side, like this, is there's air around the singer. The separation of the instrument is fantastic. For me, the M33 accentuates the strength. So in short, if you're, if you're like a mid-range that's on the lean side and has extended dynamics in the upper mids, 
then these might be for you. If you're looking for a speaker with a smooth mid-range with extra butter, yeah, these are not for you. If you have never listened to this song, it's called I Put a Spell on You from Isa, you should. I love this version because, man, she puts everything she has in this song. Mr. Scott, I need more power. Captain, no problem. I'm giving you all the power I have. This is how she sings this song. Even on the smooth sounding Bukhar S400, the peak notes, you will feel the ear piercing highs. With these monitors, holy cow, man, you're not listening to music. You're attending a performance. When she yells, I put a spell on you, you'll be like, yes, ma'am, you did. I guess that is what live music should be. When there's dynamics, you should physically feel it. Yeah, this is that kind of speaker. So before we wrap it up, don't forget to check in the description for the promo code if you want to give Surfshark a try. To end this video, let me share with you what I concluded at Mr. Vintage's home. So I brought it over to Mr. Vintage's home the other day to try these speakers. We were like four audio files and what we did that afternoon was that we tried the monitor with different vintage gear. Vintage Macintosh, vintage Acuface. Uh, we also A-B tested against the Kef R3 Meta. Now, as I said earlier, you need a certain distance from these speakers for them to shine. At Mr. Vintage's home, I know now, now I know, that we did not have the correct distance. So yes, Mr. Vintage also picked up on the upper mid-range bump. Still, there are a few things that we noticed that are worth mentioning. First, you can hear all kinds of details at low volume because it's a very resolving speaker. We don't need to push the volume loud and there's plenty of resolution. Next, these speakers woofers are quite fast and it does not sound boring and they disappear in the room easily. Now, Mr. Vintage's friend said something very interesting. He said, if we compare this to the Kef R3 Meta, it's obvious that the R3 Meta has a voicing that will appeal more to the masses. However, there is something special about these monitor speaker for some people. This is a speaker you keep for life. With that, I hope I have set a realistic expectation of what to expect from these speakers. This is what I call a durian speaker. A bit like the $15,000 Klipsch La Scala. Okay? Now, I myself am not a durian eater. Well, in this case, I personally tend to favor speakers on the smoother side, which is why the new Ganyan speaker will be on the smoother side. However, there will be a group of people who will pay any price to eat durian. 6.5 grand is not cheap. And you can say, there are many other choices at this price. I would say not really. If you like durian, you will not settle for an apple, even if it is half price. With that, I will see you next time.